Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, another Themis uh, webinar. This uh, topic today is SQL PL array processing in DB2. This is cross platform. What we're going to see here this morning, you can uh, code up on either platform of DB2 uh, when you're coding up some SQL PL store procedures. My name is Tony Andrews. I work for Themis Education. There's my email, tandrews at themisinc.com. If you go to our website, uh, themisinc.com slash webinars, um, you will get, uh, you can download a copy of the slides that you'll see in this presentation here today. Okay. If you have any questions, I'll try to get to some of them the best I can towards the end of the webinar. You can submit questions by typing into the uh, into the, the uh, webinar control panel there. Uh, any questions not answered due to time constraints can be answered afterwards via an email. Feel free to send me an email afterwards if you have a specific question um, as we move along um, here or even afterwards. Okay, so SQLPL has uh, become quite a popular um, programming language for stored procedures in DB2 for a variety of reasons. And uh, because of that, we're seeing a lot, uh, just about every version that's been coming out here lately and enhancements that we're gonna see through version 12, uh, they're adding a lot of new functionality and a lot of new functions and such for us in that language. So one of the, uh, one of the, the functions that came out and um, in version 11, was the ability to have a parameter in a stored procedure or a declared variable in a stored procedure in the SQLPL language that is it of an array data type. So those of you that have um, that have been programming uh, any, uh, most languages have the ability to handle arrays, where we have multiple uh, multiple values, you know, in like one one parameter or one declared variable that we can stack up. We now have that ability in the SQLPL language, and I'm going to talk about a little bit about that today. Got a lot of good examples in here to show you how we uh, declare one of those, how do we load one of those, how do we unload one of those, how do we use the values in there in an SQL DML statement. Okay. All right, let's see what else here. Um, All right, so we're going to learn the rules of coding and defining, you know, variable array data types. We're going to learn a lot of the functions that come with uh, an array data type. Array ag, array delete, trim array, unnest, cardinality, we're going to see a few more. So the fact that we can create a, a um, variable or a parameter with of an array data type, they also then provide us a lot of functions that we can do against that array uh, parameter or variable. So we're going to see uh, we're going to see some of the uses of these constructors, and we're going to show you a lot of examples on some of these uh, these functions that come along with it. Um, this is new as of DB2 OUW 9.5, DB2 for I, even ZOS version 11. Okay, what is an array? You know, those of you that may not be that familiar with it, um, you know, it's a it's a user defined data type. You know, DB2 comes with its own set of built-in data types. The year of hire date, year is year is a function. It's a built-in a built-in function. It comes with its own data types. You know, of uh, a date, a time, a timestamp, an integer, a decimal. Those are all built-in data types. We can create some of our own functions, user-defined functions. We can create some of our own data types, user-defined data types. So we have to actually create a user-defined data type that is of an array data type. Okay, uh, array entries can be accessed and modified by some index positions going beyond a number of, of entries that we have in an array that have not been loaded yet, get you an SQL code of minus 20439. And you're going to see that, that come up in a few other slides here. Uh, there'll be other times where that is going to come up when you're trying to access something out of an array. So we have to first create the array data type and then use it to define a stored procedure parameter, SQL, PL, declared variable. Or in version 12 here in DB2, you can actually, we can have a global variable that, has, that is of an array data type. So why do we have, how do we have, why do we have arrays? 
Okay, well, we're passing a, a set of values back and forth between stored procedures. I mean, how have we, how have we done that before? Well, we, we've done it in a lot of different ways. Global temp tables are very common. We call a stored procedure, it loads up a global, uh, declares a, uh, a global temp table, loads all these values in it, returns to the calling stored procedure, returns to the calling program, and then they, they fetch through that global uh, temp table for all the values in there. Sometimes we may see, uh, we may see in stored procedures, they may create like 25 different uh, parameters and they load up any, anywhere from one to 25 of those with values. And it's up to the store procedure then to look through and evaluate those parameters to see which ones have values and then use those you know, subsequently in, in its logic. Or they may have one large var variable character parameter and they load it up with a bunch of values, either comma delimited or stacked up next to each other. And then it's up to the store procedure to string its way through that long bar char and break it up into the different values that it can use in this logic. So those are kind of some cumbersome ways and, and not always the most efficient ways. So the arrays kind of overcome a lot of those. And in, um, in performance testing, you know, it, is, it has been shown that these will outperform some of the other uh, ways that we've been able to pass multiple variables at, or multiple values at one time. Okay, so some of the SQLPL array rules, okay? The arrays uh, in the SQLPL language are allocated and deallocated dynamically. Memory allocations based on the cardinality, the number of entries loaded into an array, not on the possible maximum. We may create an array here. We're going to see some examples coming up that says, hey, this array could have 25 values in it. But when we start loading those values, DB2 doesn't automatically get a, 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 some storage in memory to accommodate 25 values. If I start loading it and I only load four or five values, that's all that's being allocated and stored in memory. Okay? All the elements must have the same data type. As I'm putting values into an array and I define that as say a character three, every value must have a character three. I can't have the first three elements of an array being character three, the next couple being small integer, and the next couple values after that being a, a date or time data type. They all have to be a consistent data, data type. Um, an array can contain a set of values. It can contain a set of values and some null values, or the column itself could be null. Um, just like we may have declare a variable, you know, in a, in a program and, um, and the value that sits in there is a null value. The individual elements can have, can have a null. I could put in the first element of an array, I could have a value. The second element could be null. The third, the third value, the third element in the array could have a value, so on and so forth. The cardinality of the array is equal to the number of elements in the array, not in the array, not the max number that it can hold. I have some examples on the cardinality coming up here. If I define an array of 25 entries, I only load up five entries, then my cardinality is five. My cardinality is not 25. Can Java handle SQLPL arrays? Yes, it can. Um, via the IBM Data Studio server driver, you know, um, there's some code uh, that I had in the original uh, presentation, um, some Java code that I had. It says see some code later. I do not have it in this webinar presentation, by the way. Okay. Can COBOL handle SQLPL arrays? No, it cannot. Okay. Java, with some special coding and having, the, having a certain driver, can pass a parameter to, can call a store procedure and pass a parameter uh, with a, uh, an array data type. It can receive a parameter back of an array data type. What we're going to see is there's two types of arrays. This one's called an ordinary array. The items are addressed by their ordinal position within the array. Position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's an associative array. This is where items are ordered by a defined array index value. The example I'm going to give you is we're going to, we're going to put some entries in an array by a state code. OH is a code. It's going to have the name Ohio. AL is going to be a code. It's going to have the name Alabama. I can then, in that associative array, I can go in and get the name based on the value of OH, and it'll bring me back Ohio. We'll see a good example of that. Okay, arrays are created using the create type command. 
degree me as a type array. Okay, includes the name of the array, the data type array, which is a keyword, and the number of occurrences. So we look at the bottom of the screen there, we see create type depth underscore array. That's the name I came up with as character three, and then the keyword array with five in brackets. So I did, I'm creating a data type called depth array that is gonna be an array of five elements. If I don't put the number five in there and just put the square brackets, it's open-ended, okay? Once we create this type, I can then use that to do, define a parameter or to define a declared variable in my SQLPL code. Here's some of the array functions highlighted here. We're gonna hit, I'm not sure if we hit all of them. We're gonna hit a number of these in the, uh, in the, present, in the presentation. The array, add some data elements to the array. The array ag adds data elements to an array by extracting, extracting data from a DB2 table. Trim, delete, unnest is another one that we're gonna, and cardinality or a couple more we're gonna pay some attention to here. Okay, so SQL per, SQLPL array function example one. Load an ordinary array from hard-coded values based on, okay, we have a create type depth list as character three array. Square brackets, open-ended, okay? So what I would do, what I would do in my SQLPL code, if I'm gonna declare a variable, I give it my variable name and I need to give each of my variables that I declare in my code a definition. I mean, what's the data type of that variable? Well, the data type here is going to be depth underscore list because that's the type that was created. That automatically gives me the opportunity to load up character three values for as many, for as, many as I want in that V department list. Now, there is a maximum. The maximum is like, two million or two billion and something that it, it, uh, the maximum is like is way out there so we can use the set statement with the array function we set my v depth no list depth list equal array and i give it a list of values that's going to list those three values going to load those into that v depth list variable so the 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 cardinality of that will then take on the number three okay if I can then say set my V cardinality equals the cardinality of that list and my V cardinality would be the number three. Cardinality is another one of these functions that was highlighted in a previous screen. I put a cardinality against a, a parameter or a declared variable that has an array definition and it will pull me out the cardinality of that. In this case, I'm setting it to another variable that I have defined as V cardinality. SQLPL array function example two, okay? I can also load up an array parameter or an array declared variable with the array function. And I can, and I can reference uh, other variables that have been declared that I have set values to previously in my code. So the same thing as the hard coded values other than this, other than this example, I'm, I'm referencing some, um, some variables that have been declared and loaded or set to some certain values previously in my code. Again, note the square brackets after the array. Here's another one. Use a select with the array function. Set my parameter or my variable equal to array and within my array I say select depth though from emp. It's going to go through the, the employee table there, grab all the, all the depth node for every, um, every um, row that's in there, and it's going to load that up in that, in that depth node list array. There's another example. Use a select with the array. Set V department list equals array, select depth no from AMP, order by depth no, fetch first three rows only. So we have a set statement, we have the array function, and in brackets, now I'm coding up an actual select statement with some logic in there. Fetch first three rows only, the cardinality is going to be three.
Here's another example. I'm going to set my v no list equal to array, which is my my uh, again my function name. And in the first uh, the first value is I'm going to set that to null. My second value, my second element in that array value is going to be whatever is in this variable called v no two. And my third value that that I'm bringing in there is actually from a select statement that says fetch first one row only. So that's going to load up three different values, a null and whatever is in my variable depth no two and my whatever comes out on my select that's first one row only. There's an array egg function. Load up the department number array with values from the nth table using a set statement. Okay. So here's another set statement, set v depth no list equal to, and then we go into a select array egg, depth no ordered by depth no from depth where depth no like d percent fits first three rows only. So the array egg gives me the ability to take the list of values in there, order them by depth no and put them in the list. Distinct cannot be used directly in the array egg set select. So in this example here, set my v depth no list equal to select array egg depth no order by depth no. If I want to use the distinct, I have to go into a table expression. So I say from select distinct depth no from the prop from this project table where depth no like d percent fetch first three rows only. I'm going to back up a screen here. I cannot directly in this select array egg example here put the distinct in there. I cannot put distinct depth no order by or or select from. Um, so let me let me let me restate that. I cannot use the the distinct directly in that select with the array egg function. I'm going to move back forward here a screen. Okay, I have to put that distinct in a select in a table expression down in my from. The select array egg stays the same, depth no ordered by depth no, and then my from has to have the distinct in there. The from has to, what goes into the array egg is a list of values and it just takes those list of values in an order by. It cannot do fetch first, it cannot do distinct, any kind of logic like that. We have to put that in a regular select statement. So we have to go into a, a table expression here. You can select directly into, but with some exceptions. The examples that we've seen so far in loading up these array, these, these um, array data types, either with the array function or the array egg, have been set statements. We can do a select. I can say select array egg depth no into my v depth no list, which is my array data type, or depth no like d percent. So it's going to go grab from the department table all the departments that begin with a D, and it's going to load them up into the V depth no list. You cannot, however, do a fetch first. If I say select array egg depth no into from where depth no like D percent fetch first three rows only, you're going to get an error. Okay, minus 490. Okay. You cannot, however, do an, an order by in there with that select. But I am going to show you how we can get around this. Okay. Um, we can do this by going into our table expressions. So let me go forward here. You can, however, code them in a table expression. So select array egg depth no into v depth no list from, and then we go into a table expression. Well, we select this where we can do the order by and we can do the fetch first. So any of the special kind of things like distincting and ordering and fetch first, you know, with the array egg function has to be coded up in a table expression. It cannot be directly part of the array egg function. The array egg function is expecting a list and it's going to put that list in, in, the, in the, the department list variable and maybe order it if it needs to order it. If it has, in this case, we don't need to have that up in our array egg because we, we have the order by down in our table expression. What if I want to empty an array? You know, sometimes we may have a stored procedure that's called multiple times from a calling program. 
and each time each time there's 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 data in these in these uh, in these arrays and for some reason and logically it may need to, to to reset the array so you could say set set my parameter or my variable equal to null okay so if i set it equal to null and i and i and i want to know what the cardinality of that is the cardinality comes back null because i set i set the whole variable or parameter equal to null. I didn't set an element in it equal to null. I set the whole variable or, or um, declared variable or the parameter equal to null. If I say set v depno equal array with square brackets, it empties the variable. Now my cardinality is equal to zero. This is what I would think most of you would want to do. If we want to, if we want to clean out, clear out a, uh, an array, do it with the array with the square brackets, that sets the cardinality to zero. Okay, let's look at this. We come in, we define, we define a uh, parameter or a variable of an array data type, like we did, and I want to set the fifth, the fifth entry in there to F22. That sets the fifth element in the array. The cardinality would be five. But what's in the first four? It'd be nulls, okay? But my cardinality is five because I already have something set at the fifth value. So having a cardinality of five does not always necessarily mean you have five values in there. I mean, null you can look at as a value. We don't think of it as a, as a value, but our fifth one has a value. The other four would be null. If I then, my cardinality is five, if I then try to take the sixth element out of that array and set that into a different variable, I'm going to get an error because we're outside the range of what my cardinality is right now. That's the minus 20439. What if I do this? I set my fifth one to F22. I set my seventh one to G22. And then I go and I and I set a different variable to the sixth one. That's going to work just fine. But what sits in the sixth element? Nulls. What sits in my first four? Nulls. My fifth one has a value. My seventh one has a value. Okay. So some pretty good examples on how do we get these arrays loaded with values. Okay, so we de we declare it. We define a data type. We declare a parameter or a variable as that particular data type, array data type, and then we use the array or the array egg function to load up the array with values. So once I have values in the array, what do I do with those values? Well, we have different ways and different things that we can do with them. The unnest function. Is a, is a great function to pull data out of the arrays and it treats the array like a table. So if I do a select count into some parameter where the depth no is in, and I say select in dot depth from unnest p depth no list as in depth, okay? p depth no list is a parameter that, had, that is defined as an array. Okay, so this is this is some syntax here with the unnest function. It's going to unnest out of that parameter that is an array that is an array data type, and it's going to build an in list for our predicate there where depth no is in. So it's really no different than saying select from some table. We're putting the unnest onto an array data data declared variable or data parameter that has a, a, an array data type, and it treats it like a table. It's going to pull pull all those values out of there, build our in list for us. We can use the unnest with something called ordinality thing. Okay? So if I come in and, I, uh, and I, I'm going to insert into some table and I'm going to select from over here in the second box on the right, select from unnest that V department list with ordinality as depth, no, and position. The ordinality is actually going to give me the position of each of those values coming out of my array. So D01, D11, D21, that's position one, two, and three. I can actually pull those out with an unnest if I want to know the actual position numbers.
Here's another unnest. We're going to select from the project table, comma, unnest out of our parameter as v depno, and then I can join those two together. I can say where the p dot depno equals my v dot depno. So again, the unnested, the unnested is pulling values out of, out of the array parameter or variable and using it like a table. So when it brings those values out, now I have my V table, my P project table, and I can join those two together if you wanted to, if you wanted to do something like this. The last array, the second type, is called an associative array. This is where we actually give a, a, an index value to elements within the array, okay? So we don't define any, any maximum cardinality. Uh, they do get unique keys that assign to them. The keys must be an integer or bar chart. If you try to define it as anything other than that, you get a minus 20436. Each element in the array can be referenced by associated index value. So here's a definition of an associated array. We create a type called states array. That, that's a name that I came up with. As bar char 16, an array of bar char 2. Okay? The array bar char 2 is defining my index values for descriptions that's going to be in my bar char 16. So let's take this uh, take a look on this next page here. The data type bar char 16 after the as keyword refers to the data values. In this case, they're going to be state names stored in the array. The array bar char 2 indicates that this is an associative array and will contain index values. And for our example coming up here as we load it, OH, AL, you know, different state codes. So by definition, with that array bar char 2, it becomes an associative array. The order in which values are assigned to array elements in an associative array does not matter, but they will be reordered in the order of the index values. For example, I declare a variable called vStateNames with the data type called StatesArray. StatesArray was defined on the previous screen, it's an associative array. So I'm going to set vStateNames with the, with the index OH equal to Ohio. Set V set names with the index of AL equal to Alabama. Okay. I can set then a parameter state index equal array first V state names. I'm going to pull out the first value that happens to be in that array. The value that comes out is AL. Although the AL for Alabama was actually the second one that I did on my set. So it's just kind of a way to drive home as we add these into an associative array, they will be ordered by their index values. Okay. How do we get the state names out of the array after they're loaded? You need to have an index state code value with hard coded or from a variable. For example, set v state names and you put you put your your index value in there equal ohio those kind of like you know load up our array then i can say set my parameter p state name equal v state names with my index there alongside my variable that has my var my array variable p state name would then get set to ohio all right so when you put the OH after the V state names, it's going to find that value in there and take the associated name and put it into the P state name, if it finds it. What if we try to set a variable parameter with a value using an index value that does not exist in the table? For example, I want to set a parameter equal to V state names with an index value of XX. But we don't have an XX in there. I've loaded OH and I've loaded AL. I have not loaded any XX. You get a minus 20439. If I try to set something with a value of lowercase OH, we get a minus 20439. So it's case sensitive on our index values if they happen to be the bar chart data type. Remember, our index values have to be integer or, bar or variable character only. 
SQL PL arrays in Java. Okay, there's a few things here on uh, on Java. Java can um, can uh, within the Java code handle passing and receiving of these variable arrays to stored procedures. Okay, in ZOS version 12, okay, we can now, we can now allow for global variables um, uh, with a, an array data type. So version 11 came along, provided support for the array data type. DB2 also allows for global variables, but not defined as an array until version 12. Version 12 provides for using an associative array as an argument to the array egg function. So they've also gave us a little bit of a more of an ability to use the array egg function also with these associative arrays so we don't have to just do individual set statements. Okay, so that's just a uh, that's just a little bit here on um, today on some of these uh, SQL PL variable arrays. If uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I hope you learned something here today. You can uh, send me an email. We actually have at Themis we have a few different uh, courses that have to do with the SQL PL language. DB1029. Exploiting SQL PL native store procedures on ZOS. We have a DB 1028 class, DB 2 LUW SQL PL store procedure development, and we have a DB 1070 class. As part of that week of, um, of different topics, we hit a, a couple of days of native store procedures, along with advanced query and query tuning on, on um, um, DB 2. Links to these can be found at www.themasync.com. Again, if you go to themasync.com slash webinars, you can download a copy of today's presentation with the slides and the different um, SQL statements in there for you. Education, check out. This is, uh, this is me personally. This is uh, specifically for you ZOS developers. I have a book, DB2 SQL Tuning Tips for Developers been out for a few years, has sold very well, has over 100 tips in there for developers having to do with SQL code. Many of these tips cross-platform. There are some tips in there specifically for ZOS, and they're pretty simple tips, you know, a page or two on each tip that says, hey, don't code your SQL statement this way, code them this way. Don't code them this way, code them this way. If you're going to look for a certain logic, think about these three or four different ways to code it. You know, watch out for sorts and watch out all these different kind of topics that uh, developers should know about the SQL language. Okay, famous for an education department, education uh, company, on site, instructor led. We do a lot of virtual classes, lots of IT classes, lots of DB2 courses, a few courses that handle the SQL PL language. Okay, let's check the. Um, Check the panel here, see if we have any uh, any questions. One second here. Is there a way to iterate over the associative array as it may not be known what the index values are? To iterate over the associative array that may not be known what the index values are oh so can i can i go through the the associative array and 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 lay out the index values in there and the answer is yes if uh, if i back up if i back up a few pages you're going to see that there was an example in there it had the array first okay the array first it pulls the index value out of there which was which was happened to be like al and then you can do an array next, array next, array next, array next. You can work your way through to pull those values out and set them in different variables. Can we have the presentation sent at our emails? Uh, I would suggest um, I would suggest that you just go to our website, themasync.com slash webinars, and you can just download it from there. That would be uh, that would be much easier.
it looks like there is no ability to use a multi-dimensional array other than a, an associative array dimensions. Yeah, you know what? There are, there are not multi-dimensional arrays uh, defined for this yet. Uh, they're like singleton arrays. Um, I would expect that to be coming up sometime in the future. They continue to make enhancements to the SQLPL language with more functionality and such. Uh, I would expect that to be sometime in the future. All right. Thanks, everybody, for attending today's uh, webinar. I hope to see you all down the road. We have a lot of other webinars scheduled in the future. Check out our website. And uh, everybody have a, uh, have a great day. If you have any other questions, um, you, can, uh, you can send me an email. tandrews at themasync.com. Have a great day.